My name is Leonardo Di Donato. I work at Teamflux Data like a senior software engineer, where I basically day by day do things about Kubernetes, uh, cloud native, or software engineering things like uh, the API layers for the new version of InfluxDB. And um, uh, I'm the creator of uh, Go Syslog, uh, fastest parser that exists for Syslog messages, and they're completely compliant with the all the RFC about syslogs, both transport and format. And I created to, together with Lorenzo Fontana, another col another colleague at Influx Data and friends of, friends of mine, uh, kubectl trace, basically a kubectl plugin to schedule B BPF trace programs on nodes or pods in your Kubernetes cluster. And you can find me basically with that username, Liu Dido, everywhere. GitHub, Twitter, usual things. Uh, since the bots were used uh, <laughs> until now were not enough, let's, let's talk briefly about these other two bots world, monitoring and observability, uh, also mentioning tracing. Uh, basically, um, uh, wh wh why I say, uh, Batsword, because uh, Batsword, uh, with Batsword, I don't, I don't mean something not useful. I mean something useful that has been adopted by so many people and abused by so many people that basically is devoid from its real uh, meaning and deeper meaning. Um, but so we should uh, get this Batsword back, making, making uh, them uh, Concept, useful concepts again. Uh, when I say this, I want I want to concentrate on the on the scopes of monitoring observability. Basically, uh, what what we have we have that monitoring should tell us whether our application is working or not. While observability is a step further and explain should explain us why it's not working if it's not working. Uh, how to do this? <laughs> Choosing da the data to collect, uh, thinking about them, not only uh, extracting data, uh, extracting data and uh, <laughs> trashing them in a data lake, in a data lake that becomes uh, huge in quantity but lower in quality. And so, uh, otherwise, this is what will happen everywhere, <laughs> every time. You, you will have someone in your team or some manager asking, where's my observability? Also, if you think to, uh, to, to put data in. Uh, BPF. BPF, uh, as I said, we will see uh, briefly. It's not uh, a talk about, primarily a talk about the BPF. It's more a talk about integra integrating pieces together to get shit done. And uh, basically, as I said, uh, other way to program the kernel in C uh, without touching it uh, from outside. And we will use it to, to avoid uh, putting white box code in, inside applications in a Kubernetes cluster and grab, for example, counting packets uh, reaching the nodes on which uh, th that us our applications without any any kind of node in application even without an application <laughs> so uh, me metrics about our cluster our Kubernetes cluster without uh, code that we wrote uh, this this way the the we can observe from outside so black box the system and also also BPF make black boxing the collecting phase of the metrics so. Let's step back one sec and uh, come back to Prometheus uh, to, to explain its journey towards the, the new standard, the open metric standard that is coming. It's really, really near, in my opinion. Uh, I suppose that everyone knows what Prometheus, what Prometheus is, right? So uh, basically, uh, briefly, uh, a time series um, database, which means uh, values that changes over time. Uh, you can represent uh, things uh, 
you can represent f things in with float values or infinite values or not a number values and things like that. Uh, I don't want to concentrate on this. I, do, I want to concentrate on the... Oh, sorry. On why it... Oh, again. <laughs> sorry. On why it changed the landscape. Before Prometheus, what was the situation? The situation was basically, there was no situation. Uh, the landscape was uh, highly fragmented. There was not a de facto standard, so not an official one. The, there were a lot of solutions with proprietary, uh, proprietary code, ancient technologies, and even they don't, don't care about uh, presenting metrics, collecting and presenting metrics. Then Prometheus came and has, be has really fast become the, the de facto standard. Why? Because, it's, uh, because of its line, simple line oriented uh, exposition format. It's really, really easy to use, really easy to instrument. And so, uh, so every application uh, contains and exposes Prometheus endpoints nowadays. Um, these are things that maybe you can look at. This is a slide to simply remember what Prometheus is in, in brief. As I said, uh, really widespread adoption. But what happened is, the, as always, the traditional vendors, traditional enterprise usually don't want to um, use non-officially standard things. And so Arsman and the others uh, had to create a new standard with all the Grisome, all the process for RFC, Anaport, official content type, MIME type, called Doppler metrics. A uh, standard that uh, intends to go beyond, beyond uh, the metrics. In fact, as we will see uh, really soon, it can represent also other things inside of metrics, adds new metrics types, adds uh, exemplars, and things like that. Uh, this applies, as always. <laughs> the fact is that we have, anyway, another standard of about uh, metrics. The, as I say, the novelties are this one. So we, we have state set, basically an enum, info is a kind of metric to represent Boolean values. For example, is this file, has this mean file been written to or not? Uh, one or zero. And gauge histograms, simply histograms about gauge, you know, gauge metrics. Uh, furthermore, uh, you, can, uh, you can now specify the unit of your values, so you can see these are uh, 20 potatoes rather than 20 uh, mushrooms <laughs> and things like that. You need to put in open metrics an elf, uh, an elf di directive at the end of the file, otherwise it will not be valid. And uh, the timestamp are in seconds, not, more, not milliseconds anymore. And then we have exemplars. Basically, exemplars are simple lines like the others, but unnamed, without a name, that are appended with an hash, an hashtag to and a space to already existing uh, simple lines. They can be used, uh, for example, for tracing matters. In the next slide, we can see an example here below. You can see there are three lines of that uh, full bucket histogram in the open metrics contains uh, three exemplars. The first one is an exemplar without a label, with, without a label, without ID, which that, with that value. No, notice that that value should al always be less or equal the, the quantile value. So the quantile value is 0 0.1 and that is 0 0.05. The, the other line contains a, an, an exemplar for, with that value, 0 0.767 and an ID. So basically, the idea is to, to represent uh, 
things that uh, points that happens for that quantile at, at some condition in every quantile. So you can trace how a particular condition regarding a matrix behaves, uh, behaves as, as time, time series data flows in. The state of art, what is? Uh, as I said, the, the standard of a matrix standard is a draft. It's not already here between us, but it's really near. Uh, which means that uh, a first reference parser exists since some months, and that PR implements it. Uh, Google and Uber, for sure, are working on it. A lot of uh, organizations like Influx Data, Google, Uber, uh, CNCF uh, are actively supporting it. Also, some traditional vendors like v uh, Vertis and, and another, I don't remember the name, uh, are on board. Uh, and uh, Py Python client for Prometheus uh, already implements it. So if you want to start to try the new, the new metrics, the new format, uh, you, know, you can copy that one liner that I wrote to, to check it, it is valid. Let's, let's uh, go towards our, our demo. So BPF, they exist since uh, 92. So they are really old. Then they've been extended with maps. And this is the feature that we will use to grab kernel data at user space and present it with uh, Prometheus. Uh, what they are, OK, there are some, some kind of BPF, some regarding C groups, others regarding sockets, others regarding key, kernel probes, kernel return probes, U probes. Trace points, root trace points, okay, really nerdy things. And <laughs> uh, but to simplify, you have a user space program able to load uh, BPF uh, with a BP, uh, with a set of BPF with a BPF call, and um, you with you can use map to communicate data back and forth. This is an example that uh, we will see live now. Uh, basically, what it does, it creates a map. Uh, the color scheme is not perfect, of course, but it creates a map called dummy. Uh, that map basically has uh, a key, integer key, an unsigned integer value, and at maximum that number of entries. Uh, we in the key, it, it represents the, the so the process ID, and it counts for every process ID the times that the right syscall has been called. So trace the, sys the right syscall every time for every PID, and increments a counter. And this, this is a C code completely unrelated to any Go code, Python code, PHP code that you have on your cluster, or whatever. So you don't need to modify your application to have to understand how many times someone in your cluster, your application, or your node is calling uh, the right syscall at the lowest level possible. The cool thing is that since BPF are the lowest, the lowest point you can catch the data without going to the kernel, into the kernel, uh, this means that you have the lowest uh, overhead possible. So your code is not bloated with uh, metric collecting and not domain related to code. And uh, they are really, really, really fast because they are really near the, the, the kernel. Furthermore, you can do things that you cannot do from inside one single application. You can uh, collect data about all your applications running on a node and then segment that data by application not collecting that data separate, separately in, in every application, duplicating the code, uh, for, for example, to count the packets. So every application I have to count the packets. Let's, let's copy this code in application A, application B, application C, application Z. No, you do this one time and then segments by application at lowest level possible with lowest overhead. So I created the uh, with the help of Lorenzo just arrived, a uh, BPF operator, so a custom resource definition for BPFs. <laughs> it's strange because uh, personally I would prefer C, 
but uh, for easiness of use, let's put some C into YAML. <laughs> and let's give this YAML to Kubernetes. <laughs> let's do these sort of strange things. And <laughs> this is me measuring my YAML. So this is the resource. As you can see, uh, we have a namespace and a resource called bpf.sh alpha one, version alpha one. Uh, I cannot zoom, this is not good. <laughs> Uh, we give it a name, dummy BPF, assigned to that time space, dummy, dummy NS, and then with a config map, uh, we, specif with the, we specify, sorry, we specify for the BPF resource, notice kind BPF, we specify to link it to a config called dummy config on the key dummy.o. So then with there we have the encoded uh, object file, so the compiled, compiled C, put it inside a binary data in a config map, and link it together with the custom uh, BPF resource. Then we should talk briefly about uh, what operators are, what custom resources are. Basically, custom resources for Kubernetes uh, are simply uh, the definition of extension to the Kubernetes API, uh, that let you specify to store and retrieve data, to store things, for example, a BPF uh, resource, uh, but they alone do nothing, almost nothing. You need a controller. You need a controller because uh, with a controller you can uh, listen, since react uh, on events uh, about that resources, for example, del a deletion, a creation, and so, and that event comes from a shared informer that is something uh, responsible to inform, to inform the overall uh, Kubernetes system that something uh, is happening about that resource. So maybe when you, create, when you apply the previous YAML, what happens is that it says, hey, someone created a BPF resource. We know BPF resource, it's a custom resource with this structure. Uh, the certain inform informs the control that uh, say, okay, what have to do with this uh, new resource? Let's schedule, let's schedule a daemon set, creating a pod with a runner for that dummy.o file. So a pod able to run that BPF on all your nodes, or maybe selecting nodes where you want to run it. Maybe you want to run it only on, cast, on, only on CI nodes, only on some nodes, who knows. Uh, this is the structure to simplify. So as I said, you have a custom resource definition that when created um, triggers the creations, triggers in the Kubernetes control, in the Kubernetes cast control, we create the creation of uh, basically a pod uh, with a Docker image that is a runner, a generic runner for our BPFs. That runner basically encodes a logic. What logic? Reads the object file, the elf, so the elf representation of the file, scans for sections in the elf, and search for maps, search for uh, trace points, root trace points, key probes, uh, all that kind of BPF programs you can do, and try to attach them, and records the map and the kind of map that you wrote in the C, and for every kind of map, it has a strategy to read data from it. For, for example, if in the C file you use the Nash map, he, use, he creates a Nash map on the Go sides, putting the key inside a key in Go and things like that. Then this map are used to present metrics. Demo time, okay? <coughs> Let's do it. So. This is the result, okay, but we'll see you later. These are the results and we'll see you later. Let's open, wait a minute. Okay, oh, really, really, oh, gosh. Okay. <laughs> okay, here we have, um, the Kubernetes operator running that is dumping uh, things. For example, previously I was trying the demo and then I deleted the namespace containing the custom BPF and the 
saying me, hey, does not exist because someone deleted this BPF resource with this ID, blah, 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 blah. Okay, who cares? Uh, let's see if I can reset this. Oops. No, let's do it. So let's start from the code because probably it's better. Let's look at the code. If we, if we are able to look at the code in this tiny, tiny resolution, I don't know. So, for example, packets. This is a BPF code. This is BPF code. Here we have another map, different from that in the slides. Uh, but the loader is the same. So this is the, 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 the cool thing. And the program that basically attaches the socket and looks for the proto. So, for example, is a TCP packet, an UDP packet, is an EGMP, uh, and you discover strange protocols <laughs> in this way and counts. So basically the scope of this program is to count, uh, to filter the socket. Uh, it's a socket filter to count the kind of packets that, that your nodes or your application receives. Then we have the other <coughs> one in the slide. And the other one, dummy, dummy C basically counts the writes as you know, this way, okay. We build it with Clang, okay, and then basically we generate the YAML and we apply this YAML. <coughs> Let's have a look at the YAMLs. The YAMLs file are this one. This is the YAML file for dummy, VPF, the same that was in the slides, and basically nothing special to look at, nothing, nothing really complicated. So yeah, I hate YAML, but this is simpler than attaching BPF by hand every time in a, in a different way, uh, and things like that. So, let's apply it. Okay? No, this one. Okay, you say it's namespace, created custom resource bpf.bpf.t. .bpf with, with this config map, okay? The namespace was dummy namespace, right? Okay, here it is. Let's have a browser window. Please come here. Okay. On this part, clearly on the Prometheus or open metrics and the prime, what we will have, we will have the count of writes for PID, by PID. So PID 599, 16 times called the, the writes is called. Let's go. Okay, <coughs> who cares? Numbers. Uh, clearly it's just a demo. And clearly uh, this is a work in progress project. For example, we can think to putting strategies on top of keys to say, uh, convert this key in a process name rather than using only the PID or things like that. But the important thing is that we don't touch any applica application code. We don't care if it is Go, Python, R language, PHP. We uh, look at uh, under the hoods and we can look also at all the nodes uh, selecting uh, only some nodes and then create rules to filter, uh, to segment these metrics by, applic by, by application, but after that you collect it at the lowest level possible with the lowest overhead. Let's now run another, another one, why not? The other one, that, um, that one about, uh, I have to delete because I'm sharing the net host so I cannot put two things on the same port. So wait a minute, please. Uh, now we will run the other, the packets counter YAML containing a BPF. In the meantime, you can see the message com messages <laughs> coming about events happening in the custom operator, kubectl, apply, Example packets YAML. Mm. Okay, done. Uh, 
QBCT out. Then we have uh, get pod fly packets something right. Oh, 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 pods not found. Why? Because the no, it's namespace yeah, completed that way. Get yeah, please. Let me check the name. Okay, packets, okay. Okay, running. Let's come back to the browser and let's have a look at the packet counts. Okay, so here we are, here we are. This is AP Proto, so 12 to uh, X is, uh, is, is. <coughs> poop, Xerox poop, I don't know what's happening on my network right now, but yeah. Strange things happening. And we are counting packets. Uh, I don't know why. I suppose that, that something strange is happening because I don't see any TCP packet, and this is really, really strange. But before it was working perfectly, I should investigate about this. The 25 is leaf one. Nope. Is some, something is happening. Anyway, we can look at what the result should have presented us. So this, as you can see. <coughs> Usually, results are like this, meaning, for example, six TCP, 551 TCP packets on that node, and then, 17 is uh, 11x, so means UDP, a lot of UDP packets and things like that. So I hope you enjoyed it and uh, the tool I'm, I'm demoed uh, is uh, Cube BPF uh, under BPF tools organizations on GitHub. So please contribute, have a look at it, uh, put critics, uh, what, everything is good. Everything is good to grow the projects and to verify that the idea is useful and, uh, and it's not just uh, a joke. But I mean, the experiments are this. It's something to, to try to understand if they can be uh, continued on or not. Thank you very much. If you have questions, uh, things, ask.